I really got this on my heart this last week, and it kind of went with what you've already said, Pastor Ed, and it's going to go with what Joe's going to say, but um, I just want to invite everybody that's here and that's out there to get back into the habit of going to church. And habit, so I wanted to look up what habit meant because I thought I knew and I just wanted to make sure it went with what I was saying, is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. And you know what, that's what we all had before COVID. Not all of us, but some of us. And then we all got into a different habit. Not all of us, but some of us. And I just wanna invite everybody to get back into the habit that's going to bring you peace. I was gonna add to that. You know, the Bible tells us that one can route a thousand to 10,000. What does several hundred or several thousand in agreement do, right? Turn it right around, turn it around. I sang that, I played the song at Men's Thing one time about, um, it's a new song and I just like the song and it says, um, God turn it around, but he's gonna turn it around as we turn it around through us, right? Amen. Well, I think it's pretty interesting how the Holy Spirit always works and I don't know why I'm always amazed whether they do a song up here and then you come up with, and, and you suppose the minister and the song already set them up for the word, right? Well, you already set us up for this today, you guys, with you, I'm talking about businesses. I wanna talk about the blessing of the Lord versus our own efforts to make a living, okay? Because everywhere I go, it's killing people. You know, just trying on our own to do it. There's a thing called works, right? Works is when we think that we can do it ourselves apart from the grace of God, okay? And you may not consciously think that, but anytime you're, you're doing self-efforts, that's really what's happening. The Bible talks about falling from grace. <clears throat> falling from grace isn't when we sin. Falling from grace is when we try to do it on ourselves, okay? And then we're not appropriating grace. We're not walking into grace. And the Lord showed me a long time ago, and I'm still learning the lesson, when I'm getting really tired, I'm, I'm doing it in myself, right? <laughs> we just talked about this morning. I said, dang me, I gotta get past that. You know, you flip over throughout the day, right? You, you start out, I start out the day in grace and faith, and then somewhere through the middle of the day, it's like, <laughs> it's dragging me. So I wanna start with, um, Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, that you pull it together, Lord, that you make it in a way that each person hears it in the way that they need to hear it, Father God, and so they can apply it to their heart and their own lives, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your wisdom today. And you're gonna see how this goes with what you guys talked about the businesses. I, I'll just crack it up back there going, so good. In Genesis, when, when God um, created man and men, man, us, man and female, um, he said he blessed them. He blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living thing that, that moves on the earth. He gave man dominion over the earth. Okay? He said he blessed them. That was the first part of the blessing. And um, some of these will be up there and some won't, so I'll, I'll let you know, okay? In, in um, Genesis 3, I think it's in 17 here, let me see. Everything looks different in the day after you think you have it ready, you know? I, you guys are so good. <laughs> then, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree, nobody's blaming his wife, he, he didn't have to go that way. Okay. of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Remember this word, in toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Okay, in toil. Both thorns and thistles, and thorns are always a sign of the curse. Okay, what did Jesus wear on his head? What did they put on his head? Thorns, okay, to deliver us from the curse. I was part of delivering us from the curse, this curse, okay. It shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb, of the herb of the field, and listen to this part, in the sweat of your face, some other versions say in the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, you are at dust you are, and dust you shall return. The sweat of the brow, toiling to make a living. Anybody feel like that's what's happening? Whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you own a business, <laughs> whether, you, whether you work for the government, whether you work for somebody, it's always toiling, toiling, toiling. How am I gonna make the ends meet? See, that's a works mentality, I believe. That's not the blessing mentality. And I know that because I walked in it for many, many years, okay? That's what drove Courtney, and they, were, they want um, Justin, Hope I have your permission, I think it's okay. Um, 
one that was thinking about doing an, a business, right? Starting up a business he wanted to do. <clears throat> and both of them got together and they said, after, seeing, after watching you all these years, we decided we don't want to do that. And I'm going, what kind of example did I set? It wasn't that, it was just the, the amount of hours and the amount of energy and the drain on us and the no time to do anything else. They saw all that and they decided they didn't want to play that game, okay? So, sorry about that. Maybe you'll still do your business, okay? I'm speaking that over you. If you want to stay married to me, you are not doing that. <laughs> okay. okay, Galatians um, 3, 13, 14, 29. You know, God has provided everything for us. Look at this. Christ, say it with me, Christ has, Christ has redeemed us Jesus. from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Okay. And um, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Christ has already redeemed us from that curse, okay? In Christ, we're redeemed from that curse of toiling and struggling to make a living, okay? Um, no, we're not going to sit around and do nothing. I'm not going there, so hold on, okay? At the blessing of Abraham, and then verse 29, and if you are Christ, are you Christ? Say yes, I'm Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, okay? Abraham's blessings belong to you in Christ. Now, not gonna be when you earn it, he's already done it for us. It's already been set up, okay? Long before you were even born, okay? <clears throat> We've been redeemed from the curse and the blessing of Abraham belongs to us. Say, the blessing of Abraham belongs to me, okay? I don't have time to go through all of it today, but it might behoove us all to go back and look in, in Genesis, go back and look in Deuteronomy, go back and look in Romans 4, what is the blessing of Abraham, okay? I mean, in my lightning quick mind, I went, I've always said that for years, and one day I thought, you never looked it up to see what it was. What is it, you know? So I'm just gonna hit the highlights. He said, blessing to Abraham, he said, um, surely I will bless thee. I will make of thee a great nation and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that have that bless thee and curse them that curse thee, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Oh, nice smile, thank you. I love it. She just went, got it. Um, and, and you can look it up in Genesis for the sake of time. I'm not going to go there. In Genesis um, 12, 2. And, um, and in Genesis 22, just look it up and go back and just re-familiarize yourself. Even Deuteronomy 28, which I never wanted to read because it's blessings and cursings. And by the time you read the cursings, I was sick to my stomach. I didn't want to read anymore, right? But they're not for you. That's what you've been delivered from. So you can bury that, right? Bury that and then go on to the blessing part and begin to proclaim that over your life. And he says that Abraham was very rich. We're not talking about just money here. We're talking about um, we're talking about being blessed in every realm of our life, okay? And, and finances are part of that. In case you didn't know, it takes finances, okay? To live in this earth and to bless others, right? And Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. I just wrote down here, lands, herds, water, everywhere he went, the ground was blessed, you know? When you, never mind, I won't go in there the other day. Um, Galatians 3.14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. It might, it already is there for us, but it's up to us individually to believe it and receive it and walk in it, okay? So that's why it's might, come upon the Gentiles. It was talking about the seed of Abraham, which you are if you are in Christ, okay? It's a powerful thing, guys. I get so tired of seeing all the struggles and all the toiling and all the, all the sadness. And one of you guys brought that up about the staff. Oh my goodness gracious, big old tires. That poor guy went in the other day and he said, they put up a sign after the first eight guys or, or people showed up, right? And I, I walked up to him and he knows me really well. And he said, Joe, he said, um, he said we have three people in the, in the whole building. We have one tire person, the owner and myself. And he said, we can't do it. I said, well, what about tomorrow? Does it look any better? And he said, we, I don't think we're gonna be open tomorrow. We don't have anybody to work. Seriously. So that is a really powerful prayer. I hadn't thought about that, praying over the business staff, you know? I just went through eight different people that we tried to get on my front, just my front desk, and it's a powerful thing. My front desk isn't just, oh, hello, come in. It, it, it's a lot, and we finally um, 
found somebody, okay, and, and she's awesome, you know, and I just went, but it took us eight people. I think Rob was praying even harder than me because I had her helping me and she was going, I need out of here, you know, so. Yeah, because I was trying to get you too, but you guys got too many kids, it was too, couldn't do it. I was grabbing for anybody. Ed, you want to work in my front desk? Please help me. <laughs> hey, a long time ago, I had Scott come work with me, remember? Yep. Our youth pastor, I was desperate, man. I, Scott came and he did a pretty good job, you know? First man I ever had on my front desk. And he didn't drive everybody away. I was glad, you know? Anyway, um, it's the same blessing with which he blessed Adam, and it's come all the way down, and I don't have time to draw it through, but there's, there's a really, really good book out there that Kenneth Copeland wrote called The Blessing of the Lord, and he, he delineates, it's about this thing, he delineates the blessing, and he follows it through all the bloodline of Jesus, all the way down, all the way down to Jesus, to us, okay? And, it, and once you see that bloodline, and you see that, that it comes through the, ge- the genealogy, so to speak, I mean, it'll just set you like, this is mine. There is no doubt this is for me, okay? Um, Let's go to Galatians. I have to watch it because I can be really fast and I don't want to do that. I'm trying to totally believe in this, guys. Galatians 3, 6 through 9, okay? Just as Abraham believed God, do you believe God? Then you're in, okay? And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, because of that, know that only those who are of faith, okay, are the sons of Abraham, right? And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, did you know this? Preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Do you know that God preached the gospel to Abraham? How about that? Saying, in all the nations shall you be blessed. So then those who are of faith say, I am of faith. I am blessed blessed. with leaving Abraham. You know, the reason we do that isn't to get it to be so. We want you to recognize you're agreeing with what's already in you by the Holy Spirit, okay? You need to be in agreement, guys, like never before. We cannot be in division. Gotta be in agreement. Okay, so where am I? What's the next one? (laughs) Say this thing, so Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for moi, for it is written, curses everyone that hangs on the tree. Do you know the the primary method of putting people to death in that time was stoning? So why did did it work out he had to be on the tree? Because because on the cross is where he was able to to reverse the curse and take the curse for us. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, okay? I'm sure there's more to it than that, but the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise. Say, I receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You guys didn't know you were going to preach this message today, did you? Isn't that awesome? All right, let me see what else we've got here. So we're the seed of that blessing. The promise is on us and to us, okay? The blessing includes the way it was originally in the Garden of Eden. Every blessing, and Christ restored it to us, okay? So we went, went a different way for a while, and he came back around, and through Jesus, and through Christ, and through faith in him and his word. Let me tell you, um, it's ours, okay? We walk in it. Um, the blessing is really the power of the blessed one. Who's the blessed one? The Lord Jesus. And who are you in him? Blessed. Okay. Ephesians 1.3 tells us that we've been blessed with every, all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. I used to struggle with that. I went, yeah, well, that's in heaven. <laughs> I need it here. I didn't get it. One day the Lord told me to have me look up that word, um, spiritual blessings. It's pneumaticos. It means every blessing does come to us by the Holy Spirit. It's yours. It's yours, guys. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. It's in Christ. Everything is in Christ. Are you in Christ? It's in Christ. It's in you. All the blessing is ours eternally. And it comes because of Jesus. We said this yesterday in the men's thing, because of of the gospel, but because of the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just think about it. God loved you so much that he that he that he set it up so you could be come freely to him. And not only that, he put himself in you. You know? Quit looking at yourselves and what you do to determine if you're righteous. You know, whoops, I messed up today. Yeah. Probably will again too, but it doesn't change your righteousness. Okay? Changes how you feel. Okay, 
which may not be a bad thing because, you know, you can pay attention to that, okay? He gave us back the blessing that, should, that was ours all along. Colossians 1.13, I don't know if I gave you that or not, okay? He tells us that he has already delivered you from the power or the authority of darkness, okay? And he's translated you, that's a lateral shift from kingdom to kingdom. He's translated you, I was in this kingdom, now I'm in this kingdom out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of of light, into the kingdom of his dear son, of his love. That's where you are now, okay? So as natural born citizens of God, and be careful how you hear this because it could be misconstrued, and I'll try not to let that happen. As natural born citizens of the kingdom of God, we do not need to, nor should we be trying to live by strictly by the rules of, of, the, of the world. Does that make sense? I'm not telling you to be a rule breaker, I'm saying, but we're not supposed to live in that. In other words, everything, the way the world, what's the world doing in the area of finances? Toiling, toiling, working your bone, um, working 10, 12 hours a day, um, um, ended up divorcing your wife, okay, ended up not spending time with your family, right, to make a living, right? That's the world's way. You gotta do this and this, you gotta work harder, you gotta work longer, you gotta steal and cheat, and, and that's the world's way, and that's where I'm applying this to, okay? So we're not, we should not be walking and living in those rules. You know, Christians, as employers and employees should be, have the highest work ethic ever, period. We should be above reproach. We should go the extra mile, go the extra mile, not, oh, I'm just gonna show up and do, no. Act like it's your business, okay? And employers, treat them like, like, like that. Treat them like they should be treated, okay? Treat them so good they don't wanna go anywhere else, okay? That's the way I'm handling it now. I don't want them to go anywhere else. I don't wanna retrain somebody again for eight months. <laughs> I have a strong motivation in that, let me tell you. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Because those rules, the way the world runs it, it's called the Babylonian financial system. Um, those rules produce fear, right? Which pollutes your faith. Can, just Fear just knocks the pudding out of your faith, right? And faith is the power of the kingdom of the blessing. The word of God is the source of the blessing. Okay, Jesus is the word and the word that he gave us to know, understand him and understand it is the source of our blessing. The word is the source of your faith. Romans 10, 17, you probably all know this. Faith comes by hearing, hearing and by hearing, the Bible, my, my Bible says the word of God, but it's really the word of Christos, the word of Christ, meaning the death, burial, and the resurrection, the gospel of peace, right? That's what that means to us. It says they which are of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham, okay? The blessing in the word of God is the connection. Actually, the word of God is the connection for the blessing in your world today. Do you understand that the word of God and faith in the word of God will bring into manifestation from the spiritual world everything you need in the material world, okay? Everything, not just things, but healing, blessing, prosperity, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. It all comes through the word of God by the blessing of the Lord. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is. Faith is now, right? The, the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. So that's what draws it in, okay, by way of the blessing. And the word of God and the blessing will also destroys the curse in your life when you believe it, right? Ed's taught that for years, that, that, that for Christians there is no curse, right? Is there a curse out there on, on the earth yet? I, I appear so. I'm not sure if I know that for sure, but it would appear it is, right? But not for you, because Christ redeemed you from the curse. He's taken you out of that world system, so you don't belong in that. Along with that, gosh, I just had to thought. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't step over into that kingdom of darkness for anything, even for a second. Don't think you can dabble in something from the past. Oh my goodness gracious. Because your memory banks, your previous way of behavior, your previous way of seeing yourself can come back and bite you, okay? Even though you're redeemed from it, even though you're delivered from it, okay? Just don't, just don't step into it, just don't do it. Don't open the door. <clears throat> now this blessing works through certain godly principles, right? The God has, like gravity is a principle on the earth, right? Faith is God's principle, right? There's many of them. So, and you said this so beautifully the other day, Pastor Ed, you said, we don't put pressure on people like in finances to give. We don't pressure people for anything, okay? If you're ever doing that, stop. We don't pressure anybody. 
We, may, we have to enlighten you and let you know what's going on, but it's not a pressure thing. The Bible says ne never give grudgingly or out of necessity. Don't, don't, if anybody's pushing you for that, walk away and go pray, okay? We put pressure on the word of God by faith, right? We draw it out by faith. We put pressure on the blessing of Abraham that is already yours, and it will bring you what you need, okay? But we don't press people. And what's that mean to put pressure on the word? Believe it, speak it, declare it, okay? See it coming to pass, okay? I can't put pressure on God. I didn't say pressure God. I said pressure on the word of God. Father, I call forth your word to work mightily in my life right now in the name of Jesus. And I believe your word concerning these issues. And I decide right now in my heart that it belongs to me right now. Proverbs 10, 22. I love this scripture. I love them all, but I love this one. It says, the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich. I know and I know people will try to turn me off going, I'm not talking about just money, please. But finances are part of it. It's like we have this huge umbrella over us. We got to see this. And this umbrella is the blessing of the Lord that maketh one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. That word, look at it, they got it the right one. Neither does toiling increase it. It doesn't, it's not you toiling to make it work. Just, are you with me on that? It's not you toiling, okay? Remember back in the beginning, we talked about the curse was a toiling, 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 and the sweat of your brow. Right here it says, the blessing of the Lord makes truly rich and he adds no sorrow with it, neither does toiling increase it. I wanna really hammer that. To your toiling does not change it, okay? This blessing is not dependent upon you toiling. It's like the overall umbrella over you, the blessing of the Lord, and in that, underneath that umbrella, in that one spot is your job, your career, your ability to make an income, okay? Is under that, but that's not all you have, and that's what I wanna to get to today here. The blessing cancels out toiling to make a living. You don't have to toil. And listen, you know, God gave us the blessings, right? He gave us all those things, they're gifts. You don't toil to earn them. We can't earn them, we receive them, okay? Somebody says, I can never thank God for all he did. You're right, but what you can do is, is be thankful and receive it, right? And that's what he did, that's what he likes. Thank you, thank you, Papa. Thank you, Father, forgive me. Thank you for what you've done for me. Man, I've never been a real grateful person. I always thought I was until I went to Africa. And when I saw this little kid, we were feeding them on the dump. And this little kid came up and they were sitting there and, and he couldn't get his little juice thing open. And he, and, he, um, and he reached out like this and I walked over to open his little juice thing. He's smiling ear to ear and his flies are crawling all over his hair and his face. And, and, he, and he just held up his little juice thing. And I went, dear God, I am a selfish individual. You know what I mean? Broke me. It broke me so fast, you know. And so... We all have that in us. We have a tendency to worry about ourselves. And, and you know, God wants us to, to understand that we've been taken care of. Let's begin to deal with other people around us, okay? God didn't put a price on the blessing or on any of his gifts or on any of his promises, okay? He did because Jesus paid the price, but on our end, it's just receive it, okay? <clears throat> See, the world tries to meet its own needs without the blessing. Long, like I said, long hours, time loss, and it ends up in a number of heart attacks and cancers and sickness and disease because um, there's a word in um, Isaiah 53 that talks about, surely he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and it talks about that. One of those words is kalal, K. Um, one, one version says koli, C-H-L-O-E. The other one says kalal, K-A-K-H-A-L-A-L. But, but it comes from... <laughs> The word kalal, which is really close in spelling, <clears throat> that means to be worn down. So guess what the enemy wants to do? Load you up, get you off and working in your own energy all the time, wear you down, and once it begins to wear you down, you ever notice what, what happens? Stupid comes. I'm saying for me, stupid comes, right? When I get tired and worn out, I, do, I say and do the most ridiculous things, and I'm going, sometimes Rob just looks at me and goes, just go to bed. Wait, just go to bed. I think it was, um, was it Woody, I think, said that, um, that when you're tired? Oh, he said that Oral Roberts told him a little secret of the universe, you know, so to speak, in, in the kingdom. And he said, when you're tired, go to sleep. When you're weary, go to Jesus. So the enemy wants to make you weary, open the door to sickness and disease, and your body's not made to be weary. When it runs down, it doesn't go get more energy for your immune system, right? It can't. It starts pulling it away from everything else. That's right. Okay? And your immune system suffers. <clears throat> I'll just throw that one in. 
that was not part of it, but anyway. Um, but God's constitution, I like this, we have a constitution in this country, we have a constitution in, in, in the kingdom of God, and it's called the word of God, okay? He tells us that the blessing of the Lord, listen to what that says again, makes. The blessing makes. You don't make, the blessing makes, okay? Can we get that? As we seek to live in the blessing rather than in our own efforts, Okay, and putting, it's, it's, it has to do with where you're putting your faith. Are you putting your faith in what you do? Or are you putting your faith in the blessing to work through you? I think that's called something like grace, maybe, you know, okay? I like when we try to define grace, right? <laughs> Go ahead, try that. When as we, let's see, as we seek to live in the blessing by faith in God's word, then the blessing makes all those things added unto you. In Matthew 6, it says, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all, say, all these things are added unto me. Okay. He didn't say, seek first what you can do, and then when you're done with it, then come to me and maybe I'll help you. Okay. God helps those that helps themselves. I don't know about that one. So whatever God has called you to do in life, your job, your position, your career, I'm sorry, that's just me, buddy. I'm just, you know, there it is. Thank you. Um, whatever he's called you to do, um, do, it, do it as under the Lord, but don't do it thinking that this is, this is what I have to take care of me and my family, okay? This is one channel, okay? You're not limited by, by that position, whether it's a janitor, whether it's a, whether it's a CEO of a company or a corporation, whether it's a pastor, you're not limited. You're not limited by what, what that can do, right? No, you're not. You're not limited by that position because of the blessing. Your employer, your job, even self-employed, your business, whatever it is, it, it's a channel. It may be a channel that God gave you. It's a channel. Say it's a channel. It is not my source. See, I struggled with that for years going, my source. And he said, you keep relying on your business as your source and, and you're not going to make it. It'll take you out, you know? Not the huh? Not the provider. <laughs> yeah, I'm my own provider. How's that working for us, right? <laughs> Good word. Now, God uses those things, but let me tell you, it's not your source. Please, it's not your source. Only God through the blessing of Abraham that's come down because of Christ and we're in Christ is our source, okay? Is our source. So I want to say it this way. I heard this said, in, um, said and I think it was Kenneth Copeland that said it. I'd like to give credit where credit's due, but he probably got it from somebody else like Dave Duell said, do you think I came up with that? You know, he said that you go to work to make a giving, giving. You trust in the Lord to make your living. Does that make sense? So when you go to work, you're going there to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going there to lay hands on the sick and what I do. I'm going there to, to, to release, maybe have, in some way take some of the stress off of people, to show them God's love, to have, have a proper attitude in everything we do. And that's what Christians should be doing in the workforce. Be such an attitude and a glow on us that they go, what do you have? That's your witness, okay? Witnessing is, can be what they're doing right now, what we're doing going out right into the highways, in high, highways and byways, but also your witness is your everyday life. The Bible says you are epistles read by all men. Whether you like it or not, they're reading you, okay? They're reading you. He told the disciples to go out without anything, right? Leave it all, just go out. He wasn't telling them to be poor. I heard a teacher one time, God just wanted them poor, so he'd depend on them and going, hmm. He was telling them, you're working for me now, I'll meet your needs. You just get involved in what I want you to do and I'll take care of everything else. So get involved in what he's calling you to do and let him take care of everything else. Do you see that? It'll take the stress off. Stress is the number one killer and it's, it's, it's magnified a hundredfold since COVID. The fear and the anxiety and the worry and the pressure and all that has gone crazy since then. And I believe that, that the enemy will, will try to bring another one on us. So, so let's get it straight now, okay? While well, it's relatively easy, okay? Didn't say it was easy, I said relatively easy, right? So you're working for me now. I'll take care of you. I will meet your needs. Philippians 4.19. Can you pull that up in the NLT or is that? I can pull it up on my phone if you want. Philippians 4.19 in the NLT. In the King James Version it says, But my God shall supply all of your need according to 
his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And if you read before that, he's talking about, um, Paul was talking about how they gave to him, okay, how they gave to, to promote the ministry. But listen to this in the NLT. This same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, and I'm gonna say that never run out, right? Which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Is that powerful? See, it's already given to you. He will supply your needs. That's the blessing of the Lord over and above what you can do with your hands. Okay? You can only work so many hours. You can only run to do so much business. And especially now without staff, you can only like, I can't deliver pizzas. I don't have anybody, you know? And that's what's trying to kill the businesses, right? He's going after the staff. He's going after that whole mess to try to shut those things down, right? And if you shut people's money down, what's one of the first things they stop doing most of the time? Giving, reaching out, right? <clears throat> so yes, we go to work, but we go to work to make a giving and bless others and show Christ's love to them. And the Lord will take care of our living, okay? There are some principles which operate this thing. And we can't go through all of it today. I mean, you'd be here all day and be enough. Be, be like drinking from a fire hose, right? But tithes, alms to the poor and offerings are one of the ways he does that. And he operates that blessing through the principle of seed, time, and harvest. I used to read that seed time, comma, and harvest. And one day he corrected me. It's seed, time for it to grow, right? And harvest, right? Guess where most of us kill the problem, kill the seed? The time thing. Right? Yeah. Kenneth Hagin, years ago, I heard a teaching. He said, um, yeah, when we do it, we pray it in faith and we plant that seed and we believe it, right? And then it doesn't come up in two days and you go back and you dig up your seed to see if it's working. If you're a farmer and you go out and dig up your seed, what happens? You kill it, right? It will never grow, right? So now I say it, seed, time, and harvest, okay? And um, there's, another, there's another principle I believe that ties into this and it's called sowing and reaping. And we use that for how we treat people and all kinds of things and it's all, purpose, it's all part of it. But I believe there's a double reference there and it also applies to money, right? Whatever you sow, you will reap. And I'll show you how I believe that in a minute. So farmers, farmers this one farmer told me one day, they plant seed based upon what, they, what the size of the crop they want to harvest, okay? Not only what they want to harvest, corn or wheat or whatever it is, but the size of the harvest. He, they sit down and he said, they figure it out. I mean, what, okay, this year I need this much, I need this much. So they plant based on that. So he showed me one day, if you don't, if you don't like what, what you're getting, what you're receiving, then figure out what, what the need is. Get ahead of that. In other words, instead of behind it, I have felt like I was always behind in finance, like trying to catch something, make something work. He said to get out in front of it, and he's teaching me to get out in front of it through my giving. Like if I need X number of dollars a month, I, I take that, I, I figure out what, what my, my giving, not just a percentage, but what the Holy Spirit wants me to give in that, and then I get out in front of it and begin to give that. And sometimes it's a little bit of a stress because you're going, I don't know where that's gonna come from. Well, you know what, as soon as you do that, it breaks that curse off your finances. It opens your heart to receive the blessing, okay? Because you're putting him first. You're putting him first instead of afterwards, like, well, I gotta pay these bills and pay this and do all this and then I'll give. It's not what it's supposed to be. He said, bring your first fruits in, okay? It's been so clear to me now, give the first fruit and don't worry about it. You know, he'll take care of the rest. You guys okay with this? So pretend like a farmer, you wanna plant, plant, in response to what the need, what you want to harvest, okay? Get out in front of this thing. Not about you, but I get tired of being behind it. And we're gonna tie it all together here with this here. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 in the Amplified Bible, okay? Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly, you ever feel grudgingly like I'm gonna, I just feel like I have to give this, that, don't do it then. <laughs> Don't do it then. Don't give that way. And Pastor Ed will teach you that too. He already has. Don't give that way, right? Um, we'll also reap sparingly. So you're gonna, you can give sparingly and get some blessings, but, you're, but it's going to determine your harvest directly, okay? Um, we'll also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously, that ble here's the perp heart intent, right? That blessings may come to someone whether it's the ministry, whether it's the, the poor, whether it's people that need, whether it's the pantry that, Tam, that Tammy's talking about, all that's included, right? And um, 
There's a scripture before I hold that right there that says, um, cast your bread upon the water and it will return to you after many days. In other words, it's like grace upon, he showed me a picture one day and I don't know where I got it from, but um, about, of the, like the ocean coming in and not, not a roaring storm, but just that, just that whoosh, whoosh as it just keeps coming in. And he said, that's grace, grace upon grace, grace upon grace, grace upon grace. Just keep receiving it. And that's what I believe that is. As you just freely cast your bread on the water, whatever, whatever you get in your heart to do, just cast it out there and, and let it, let it just keep coming back. He'll multiply it. And here's why. He who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Next one. Let each one, every one of us, okay, give as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart. Last Sunday, um, Pastor had said that. He said, oh, I hope you don't give out a percentage. And it busted me because sometimes that's my first thing. I go, okay, 10% of that. And then I try to allow another so much percent for, for alms and you know, offerings. But he caught me and I went, oh, ding me. I went, okay, so we won't do it that way anymore. Um, but he's made up his own mind. So as you made up your own mind and purpose in your heart, that means by the Holy Spirit, right? Listen, God, what do, you, what do you want today? This is all yours. I give it back to you. You've given me this finances. Now I give it to you. You're the owner of it. I'm a steward of it. What do you want me to do? You've given me this house. He taught me to do that. I'm worried about protecting my house. And during COVID, I went crazy because of all the, I got off track for a while, but um, he said, um, give me back your house. So I gave him back the property. I gave him back my wife. I gave him back my family. I gave him back everything that we have and, and I'm a steward of it now. So guess who's responsible to take care of it? I don't have to worry about it. Fear comes when you think you're responsible to protect your life because you know you can't. You got that? You ever run around trying to, you know, you can only lock so many doors. You can only, <laughs> I don't wanna go there. Anyway, um, not reluctantly or sorrowfully Oh, I'm sorry I gave that. I could have gone out with that money. Ooh, okay. Or under compulsion. You know what that means? Feeling the pressure to give, okay? Now here's God's heart. For God loves, parentheses, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. That's God's heart toward us in our giving, okay? And then his heart is the blessing that follows all that, because that blessing just opens your heart. When the blessing is already there and already set up, and you move into the principle and begin to apply that to your life, it just flows. It'll just flow. It takes your heart block out of the way, okay? I really truly believe even in this economy, even in this world, there is no shortage because it's God's blessing. It's God's finances. It's God's blessing on your health. It's God, there's no shortage of health. There's no shortage of, heal, of healing. There's no shortage of, of rest. There's no shortage of peace or prosperity or anything in Christ, if we're listening. The Prince of Peace resides in you. He's teaching me this again for the last 40 years, but to relax into the peace of God in me. I don't have peace, Lord. That's because you're here, not here. Prince of Peace resides in you and he's given you everything you need for life and God in this. You guys okay with this? Okay. Well, Father, we thank you that your word has gone forth and we thank you, Lord, that however I presented it, that each one heard in their heart what they need to hear. And we thank you, Lord, for clarification by the Holy Spirit. We need to hear it by the Holy Spirit. We need the revelation knowledge, Lord, coming from you, not by what we say. And Father, we thank you now as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. You just touch each person's heart to show them the areas where the enemy has blocked them and shut them down and tried to destroy them, Lord God, so they can be released. And I speak release right now over every one of our hearts in Jesus' name and every one of these areas. And we thank you, Lord, for the joy set before us now to be part of your kingdom in Jesus' precious name.